Hi, my name's Lee Toller. I'm the senior pastor of Narry Warren Baptist Church. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about my spiritual journey because uh, you know, I wasn't into this uh, church thing at all. Growing up as a kid, uh, my parents didn't do church. In fact, um, I don't ever remember them reading a Bible. Uh, I think that they might pray once a year or something. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it was, uh, they weren't into the God thing, really. They probably would have said quite a lot of the time that they believed in God in a general sense. Uh, but there'd be other times I can remember they saying he didn't believe in God, you know. So that was something of my heritage. And I, when I was about 19, I can remember being at a party one night t- talking with this girl. And uh, she was philosophizing that God was real. I was arguing far more from the atheist point of view that I didn't believe God was real, that he didn't exist. And so that was at the age of about 19. But then when I was about 21, 22, I started to wonder... You know, and uh, at the time, I'd been trying to make it in the music industry um, and, uh, you know, just playing with a band, writing songs, doing gigs, getting radio interviews, that type of thing. And I can still remember one particular night. We, we played a, a particular nightclub, which was, had a really big reputation. It was great to get a gig there and it had been a huge night and we'd been really well received. And I can remember walking down off stage and thinking to myself, having played some really cool guitar licks and the whole deal and having people who like to scream and all that sort of thing, got down after the gig and I just remember thinking, it felt a bit empty, felt a bit flat. And I actually thought, surely I should be experiencing exactly the opposite feelings of that because it felt like we're living the dream, you know? Well, anyway, um, it was around that time I just started to think, I wonder if there's more to the bricks and mortar technology and music of this world that I live in than what I've ever grasped. Is there, I don't know, a spiritual dimension to life. Anyway, um, I started to explore that and I guess the first thing I really did was I said, God, you know, speaking words out into the universe, God, if you're there, help me know if you're there, reveal yourself to me. And I must have said those words out into space, I don't know, three or four times, but there was a definite sense that God started to step in. God started to do something about this. And I can remember around this time, I used to start work at 7 o'clock, and so I'd hit the sack during the week fairly early at about 10, and 10, 10, 30, and I'd flick on the radio around that time quite often. And on two of the mainstream stations, there was this show called Insightful Living with this preacher, Charles Swindle. And I'd often, you know, ignored those sort of shows, but one night I just got listening to this guy. And what he was saying actually made a lot of sense. And so I started to listen to this quite regularly. It was on four nights a week. Um, And... uh, The more I listened to it, the more I thought, perhaps there's something to all of this. This guy was quoting the Bible all the time. And I thought, well, I should have a bit of a look at the Bible. And I um, I remember getting given one in year seven at uh, school, high school. And uh, I don't think I'd ever really read it, but I'd kept it. So I dug around in some boxes and I pulled out this little red Gideon's Bible. Started to read it. A lot of it didn't make sense to me. It was in New King James English, so it was a bit hard to follow in places too. But at the same time, um, there was occasionally a verse that would really step off the page and speak to me. Anyway, um, started to read that a little bit. Started to pray a little bit more. And one of the messages from this preacher guy, Charles Swindle, was about fellowship. He was saying that you know Christians should, um, should hang out together. They should spend time together. They should fellowship together. And I thought to myself, well, I don't, I don't think I know any Christians at all. So uh, anyway, I thought, well, okay. I should ask God to help me find someone who's a Christian, meet someone who's a Christian. So I remember in my apartment, kneeling down on the carpet, from the head to the carpet, you know, that's, that's why I thought you prayed, I saw it in a movie or something. So I'm dead, kneeling down on the carpet and saying, God, I've heard this preacher say that Christians should have fellowship, they should hang out with other Christians, could you help me meet a Christian? And I think it was the second time I prayed that prayer, I got a a phone call as I was praying it. I was a bit annoyed at the time because I was just interrupting this prayer time. Anyway, I took the call and it was for a position which I hadn't applied for. Went to the interview, got the position and there I met a Christian guy. It's a guy called Mark Williams. And so he was in this workplace and only reflecting back, I realized God answered that prayer as I was praying with that phone call. Well, this guy talked to me about spiritual things. We had lots of conversations about all sorts of different issues, evolution versus creation, you name it. Um, after about 20 or so conversations and several invites to uh, a Bible study group he wanted me to get along to, I eventually arrived there. 
And as I got along to this group, I walked into the room and never seen a Bible study group before. And so there's uh, all these uh, guys about the same age as me, uh, early 20s, uh, sitting around sort of in a circle, lounge setting, I guess about 15 of them. Uh, about half of them were surfies, or probably more actually. Um, and uh, this, this guy, this pastor, King Valentine, was leading the Bible study from the book of Hebrews. Uh, half of it probably didn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, you know, it was all very new. Uh, and I remember asking a few questions throughout the night. And uh, at one point, um, the pastor actually said to me, well, why don't we meet and talk about some of this stuff during the week? And uh, so we did that. I caught up with him, um, I don't know, a few days later, went around to his office and we chatted through a heap of things. I must have asked him about 20 different questions. And every time I asked this guy a question, he would open his Bible. Instead of answering it, he'd hand me the Bible and say, have a look at those couple of verses. And I'd read them. And I'd think, oh, okay, yeah, all right. After an hour of this, I thought, mate, the Bible's got the answer to everything. <laughs> if you just know where to look for it. It gave me a huge respect for the Bible. Um, the second time I met with the pastor about this and been to another Bible study, I guess, in the meantime as well, uh, a group one, and... As I chatted with him the second time, one of the things he seemed to be pointing out to me was that I clearly had faith now in Jesus, but I wasn't following Jesus. And he was right. You know, I mean, my, um, my world, as far as the way I lived, hadn't really changed that much, except uh, I was exploring this whole God thing. So, yeah, I was reading the Bible a bit, praying a bit, now going to this couple of these church things. And, but um, as far as still being in the music industry, the party scene, getting drunk, and all that sort of stuff, it was still there. That, that hadn't really changed at all. And I felt God, as I prayed about this, was putting his finger on this, saying, you know, this lifestyle that you've got has got to change. And I also, even more challenging, I felt he put his finger on me saying, on my heart saying, you've got to leave the music industry, this dream that you're chasing. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't think I can. I've been exploring this chasing this dream of making it in the music industry for a few years now and you know we're getting better and better gigs and you know, more and more opportunities doing recording and stuff and I don't, I don't think I can leave it. Anyway, in the process of I guess about a month something significant happened in my life where I'd been uh, I guess um, journeying in a particular direction with particular motives and desires some of that started to change. I can still distinctly remember that I was finding myself enjoying Bible study more than I was band practice. And then I started to realize I was enjoying just going to church, singing praises to God, hearing preachers preach. I was enjoying that more than I was getting up on the stage under the light, playing the guitar. And I realized that uh, as much as I loved learning new licks on the guitar and practicing the guitar, I was starting to enjoy personal time with God in prayer more than I was practicing the guitar. Over the space of a month, something had happened within There'd been a change, a transformation, a metamorphosis. Or as the Bible puts it, I've been born again. John was, you know, uh, in the book of John, John 3.3, 3, Jesus was talking to a religious leader called Nicodemus. And Jesus said to him, I tell you the truth, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And that is what had happened to me. I already understood that Jesus Christ came into this world, lived an amazing life as an example for us to follow, but also died an extraordinary death. A supernatural death. A death that he talked about in terms of bearing the sins of humanity. And in a cosmic way, which isn't easy to explain, Jesus took away the sins. It's as if uh, every person has a whiteboard with all manner of black text on it about the things that we've done that don't measure up to God's requirements. And by his work on the cross, by anyone believing in him, it's as if he takes out a big whiteboard rubber and just rubs out all the stuff in our life that doesn't measure up to God's standards, all the sin. And that's what I understood Jesus achieved on the cross. I believed that. I'd accepted his salvation that he offered. But now I was coming to a place where I was also accepting his lordship, willing to make him the director of my life, the one who would guide my life, the one who would bring purpose and direction in my life. So I got to that place where I'd wholeheartedly accepted Jesus Christ. And I guess in the realization of all of this too, I got to the point where I thought, man, the world has been duped. Millions of people all over the world have totally thought that, hey, this God thing's not real. They've never bothered to explore it. I discovered this extraordinary revelation that God is real, that he wants a relationship, freely available relationship with everyone in this world. I discovered this. I found this. I thought, mate, I want to give my life to this. 
You know, this is more important than anything else in the world, just to help people understand and discover the reality of a relationship with God. And so not too long after that, actually, uh, I felt God saying to me, put his hand on my shoulder, so to speak, and say, I want you to leave your regular work. I want you to devote your life to helping people discover a relationship with me. And I've been doing that for many, many years now. You know, if uh, you've been listening to this and you think to yourself, hey, well, I, I'm not even sure if I, I believe in God either. Um, I've got a prayer that I, I want to encourage you to pray right now. Yep, right now. Just a simple prayer. Can I lead you in that prayer? Just to open your mind to the possibility that God is real. Simply pray these words. Simply say this. In prayer. Just prayer is just talking to God. God, I'm not sure if you're real or not. But help me understand if you're real. Reveal yourself to me. Help me to know if you're there. Amen. Simple prayer like that can start you on a journey into a relationship with God. That same prayer started me on that relationship.